Alright guys, so today I'm going to talk about lighting for your indoor gardening, aquaponics, hydroponics, whatever it may be. Lighting is one of those topics where you really need to do your research because this is one of those make or break sort of deals. If you buy the wrong grow light, you're not going to have success even if you did everything else perfectly. Make sure you do get a good grow light and don't skimp here. There are many options on the market and that makes it very confusing. Some of the options uh, that have been around for a while that have been very good are the metal halide and high pressure sodium which are the high intensity discharge lights. The metal halide are a little bit more toward the blue spectrum so they do great as far as vegetative growth, growth or leafy green vegetable growth. Um, useful bulb life is about 10,000 hours. Their output dramatically decreases as the life of the bulb goes on. If I remember correctly 50 percent of the output is gone by those 10,000 hours so even if the bulb is putting out light, you need to change it um, and not wait around because um, you will get diminished growth dramatically. It does put out up to 125 lumens per watt, but the bulb does get extremely hot and it does basically cover a square area of uh, growing. The high pressure sodium is a little bit more toward the orange-red spectrum, so that does great as far as flowering. Um, depending on the bulb, and they do have better ones nowadays, but depending on the bulb, you may get leggy growth if that's your only source of lighting. Um, but it does great, especially as far as uh, supplemental lighting, like in a greenhouse. Those bulbs can last up to 20,000 hours, and their output does decrease as well. I don't think it's quite as dramatic as the uh, metal halide, but it does... Uh, decrease quite a bit compared to some of the other options. Um, it is fairly efficient, it puts out about or up to or around 140 lumens per watt. It does get extremely hot if I remember right, it's around 500 degrees give or take Fahrenheit. Um, it doesn't have a very flattering look, everything is going to look kind of like a dingy yellow. Um, so if you're looking for something attractive as well, you may want to pass on this one. Incandescent bulbs, don't even consider those. Um, those are very poor as far as growth. They're going to be hot, very inefficient as far as lumens per watt. Um, LED lights, that's one of the newer topics in the last few years or so. Um, the advantage of the LEDs, they're very cool and you can specify a very particular wavelength. Um, you can hone right in on the chlorophyll wavelengths, the carotenoids, or whatever it is you're going for with the plant there. Um, the problem with it is there's a lot of variety out there, a lot of poor quality produced. Um, so, depending on who you're buying from, you may or may not get a good light. If you're going to get an LED light, make sure you get it from somebody who has a very good reputation or buy it from somebody who has a lot of good reviews from many customers. Um, because, again, you don't want to get stuck with a light that's just going to give you poor results. It just makes the whole process frustrating. Um, my favorite, um, because of cost and many other factors, would be the fluorescent. There's the T8, which is the one inch bulb, and the eight, or the T just stands for how many eighths inch it is in diameter. So the T8, that doesn't put out as much light as what I like. Um, fairly efficient, and I like the other bulbs there. Um, so you may have to put that fairly close to the plants and keep moving it up as the plants grow. Um, I like the T5 high output here. Each bulb I think is 54 watts. Um, this puts out, since it's four bulbs, puts out about 20,000 lumens, and I'm covering a one foot by four foot area, which is perfect for this light. It's four feet long, about one foot wide, so I've got that covered. The other advantage of this is you can choose what spectrum you're looking for. I've got a flowering plant up there, a tomato plant, which is doing great under this. I grew it from a cutting um, all the way up into uh, production there. We've already uh, pulled probably 20, 30 cherry tomatoes off. We've got about another 20. We've got a pick off there pretty soon. But yeah, this T5 grow light I did buy, I think it was from htgsupply.com, um, which I'm very happy with everything I've bought from them so far. Bulb replacement, and I, I'm not really supporting just them, there are many, many good suppliers. Um, bulb replacement, I think these bulbs are about $8 a piece. Um, and again, you can specify that spectrum. You can do the daylight, you could do the little bit more toward the growth, the flowering. I think they even have a finishing bulb now that puts out a little bit of UV light. Um, so it's very good. Um, make sure you do run your light. If you're not sure how many hours your plant needs, um, and it, again, it's gonna depend on the light as well. Um, I would just start out at about 14 hours, put it on a timer here if you don't have to uh, 
keep flicking it on and off um, because you're going to forget and it's just a lot easier, it's a lot more pleasant. Um, you're going to have to vary that time depending on how much room light you get in direct or direct sunlight. Some plants need more, some plants need less. Um, I've got a variety of plants, so I just went in the middle there 14 hours and then everything's doing great. But plants can go 12 to 18, more or less, just depending on what the plant is. And in reality, a lot of the numbers that these manufacturers are giving customers may not mean a lot to you. Um, they're going to give you the numbers that sell the light, um, but you really don't know how much light is being used by the plants, how much is being received and uh, used photosynthetically or for other processes. Um, so you can actually look up a, a number called a PAR value, P-A-R. If I remember right, that stands for photosynthetically active radiation. So it basically tells you um, how much of the spectrum is in that usable range by the plant. You can also look up um, the PPFD, which I think is the flux, photosynthetic photon flux density, I think it is. Either way, it basically tells you how much light is being produced per square meter per second. Um, my advice though, when you're going to buy a light, they're not going to give you all this information. There's just too much information to really sit down and read through. You'd have to be, re be reading the scientific articles, the journals, and it's not worth that. Go to a reputable seller, somebody who sells thousands of lights, somebody who is has been in it for years, um, or go to somebody who has a lot of reviews, a lot of positive reviews from customers. Um, don't go to somebody who just has a fancy ad on whatever website it may be and is ordered a shipment of these from China and wants to sell them. Um, make sure it does have good reviews and then you should do fine. Um, so again, uh, have some fun guys. And below, if you could comment, um, I would greatly appreciate any thumbs up if you subscribe. But down in the comment section specifically, um, like I said, Determining the best light really depends on reviews of uh, the people who use them. So if you could tell us what light you have and what experience you have, I think that would help out everybody who uh, looked at this video. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good day, guys.